You see today's White House press briefing? If you didn't, you missed Democratic operatives posing as reporters stunned by the idea that mail-in voting might not be totally 100% secure. It was amusing to watch. Of course, the risks of mail-in voting are obvious. The latest example of that came today. DOJ announced that the FBI and the Pennsylvania State Police are investigating fraud in mail-in ballots in Luzerne County. That's the place Donald Trump won by double digits four years ago. According to DOJ, several military ballots were, quote, discarded. Investigators have recovered a total of nine ballots so far. Not surprising, the DOJ says an overwhelming majority of those ballots were cast for guess who? Donald Trump. Meanwhile, in Greenville, Wisconsin, authorities announced Tuesday that three trays of mail, including mail-in ballots, were discovered in a ditch, not counted, in a ditch. We've seen other examples of this throughout the year, including deliberate mail-in ballot fraud in New Jersey and in West Virginia. Just hours ago, in the state of Texas, the state attorney general announced that a county commissioner and several others have been arrested in an organized mail-in balloting scheme that took place during the 2018 Democratic primary. But to reporters in Washington, this is impossible to believe. For the people doing it, it is confirmation that actually it works pretty well. Last week, judges on Pennsylvania's Supreme Court ruled that mail-in ballots need to be counted well after Election Day. You won't be shocked to know that five members of the body that made that decision, five out of seven people on the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania, are partisan Democrats. They're elected. They're politicians. Last week in the state of Michigan, a judge called Cynthia Diane Stevens issued a very similar ruling. In fact, she went farther. She mandated ballot harvesting. Ballot harvesting allows paid political operatives to collect ballots in bundles and bring them to polling places. What could go wrong? Well, fraud, for one thing. In fact, fraud's the whole point of it. You should know that Cynthia Diane Stevens is not much of a judge. She's a political activist. You often hear conservatives deride activist judges, but that's not an overstatement in this case. Cynthia Diane Stevens is proud to be an activist. Four years ago, she appeared at an event at the University of Michigan on equity and inclusion, and she literally gave the crowd advice on how to be an effective activist, not judge, activist. It's on video if you want to find it. There's nothing partisan judges would like to destroy more in the end than a quick, efficient, fraud-free election night. That's the goal here, make no mistake. If all the votes are counted in one night, no one will have time to issue rulings that throw out ballots they don't like. And that's why judges in Pennsylvania and Michigan want poll workers to count votes for weeks after Election Day. With their rulings last week, they made that essentially inevitable. It'll be a disaster. We know that for certain. We've seen it before. During the Iowa caucuses this past February, we still don't really know who won in Iowa today, seven months later. But to leaders of the Democratic Party, the caucuses weren't a debacle. They were a blueprint for the presidential election, where Joe Biden takes Hillary Clinton's advice and does not concede no matter what happens. All he has to do is smile and wave from his hotel room on election night, and the lawyers will take it from there. That's the plan.